This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, BQ neighborhood of Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's Sorgatron Media Studios, and we're doing something different. If you're catching us on the stream, what's up? We're early this week. If you're catching us later in your wherever you download or watch the show uh, afterwards, you may notice uh, this is not didn't have a number to it. It's a special. We're going to do a uh, uh, Ask Me Anything. We got a couple people in chat room. A couple people have submitted on Instagram already. Um, and we got with us here in the studio, Kitty Dudas. Hi, guys. The sales and marketing director over at the Scare House. Spooky, spooky. Marketing and sales, sales and marketing. Director of sales and marketing. Director of sales. I said all the right words in the yep. wrong order. <laughs> That's Damn the it. best you've done, though. I'm, proud. I'm hashtag proud. There you go. And uh, Chilla will be joining us um, supposedly very shortly. Uh, and you know, we, we may just slide him. He might just slide into our podcast. He just shows uh, up. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but in the meantime, please go check out everything at awesomecasted.com. You subscribe to the show on iTunes, Apple Music. All the places, YouTube. I don't have the notes since this isn't a real show, a real <laughs> episode that we're doing. Uh, but uh, I'll bring those up so I don't screw that up anymore. It's up as at AwesomeCast on the Twitter, on the uh, uh, Facebook page, a great Facebook group that we have. And, uh, of course, follow all of our other stuff because I actually put the AMA for AwesomeCast on my personal account. Uh, that's where people see it on Instagram. So, And also play with that questions thing, which is kind of fun. Uh, and a shout out, as usual, thank you so much to our Patreon supporters. Uh, uh, Matt Weller and John DeGore at the Coffee Club $5 level and the Fan of the Show dollar level, Michael Fedor, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter. And uh, you guys can submit to at Patreon, or you can pledge as well if you like what we're doing on the show. Help us keep the lights on here at patreon.com slash awesomecast. So like I said, it's kind of an AMA and ask me anything, but you actually have a topic running right, right into this already, yes. right? Yes. Uh, which uh, there is a social media question. Uh, so I think, but I think kind of right off the bat, like this is the where we get into kind of the broad topic topics i feel and not the what's going on this week right correct so so what do you, what do you have in mind uh okay so I, it goes right into the um the asking on it, it, some of you may have noticed that instagram if you've updated your instagram because if you have not updated your instagram you will not notice this um in within your stories you can go on the stickers which is that little thing it looks like a post-it note in the corner and mm -hmm. that's how people if you're not familiar with it that's how you, people add gifts to their particular pictures or videos mm -hmm. or tags of location there's all the fun things are in that little spot in that little sticky note uh within that is a kind of ask you question thing which is very clunky in my opinion mm -hmm. um it, it just far as right now goes um you essentially can post a question and some people are like, you can ask me anything. Or some people are like, don't ask me anything. Um, and then answer your question anyways, <laughs> which is, which is fine. However you want to play it. It's fine. Um, so I, I've, I've played with this both with my personal account and uh, Scarehouse's account and, um, posted it. And the way you get responses to your, it's, it's weird because if you're an Apple and you're on an iPhone, you can add a picture or video to your response. Mm -hmm. If you are an Android, you are not quite at that point yet, which is very frustrating to But there are questions. Yes, you can do the there. questions, but the responses aren't as pretty. Okay. Um, the questions go into this kind of hidden area. Um, if you're not familiar with stories, um, if you pull up your stories, you click on your own story, you'll see a number in the bottom left-hand corner with little face bubbles. Uh, if you click on the little face bubbles, that'll bring up who has watched your story. So if you're not familiar with that, you can actually see who has watched your story. If you Wait, really... how do you get to that? Okay, so if you go to um, pull up Instagram, mm -hmm. click on your stories in the okay, corner. and that's where... Okay, it's so like your story there. Okay, I want to make sure we're getting to it the same way because I, I felt like there was another way. There might so, be. That's that's yeah. the only way I figured out. So if you click on your story, you'll go bottom left-hand corner. It says seen by and gives you a number. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how you see your viewers. If okay. you have a question. And you and you pull up and you'll get like the who's seen it and the mm -hmm. stats if you have that enabled and everything too. Yeah, if you have a business account, you can check all that out um, to see how many people have seen it and all that good stuff. 
Um, but this would be the point where this is also where if you want to download your story for later or just trash your story for whatever reason, like, oh, crap, I shouldn't have posted mm-hmm. that. There you go. Um, but this is if you have a question out there, this is where the answers will be. There will be answers there, responses, but you have to click on more responses to see all of the responses. And then they're all little rectangles or squarish things all over the page. So you scroll through them and see your questions, depending on how many you have. Um, it does not go away. Like if I answer a question, the question does not go away, which makes me crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like if, if I already click on, if you sent me a question and I clicked on your question and I answered your question, that question will still be in the lineup of questions, like responses to my question. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's annoying as crap um, because it's easy when you have a handful of responses. But but so like I I had I did just an ask me anything that mm-hmm. started off, which was had a lot of responses. I had like I don't know maybe like eight responses mm-hmm. to it, but I can imagine something like uh, you have a lot probably a lot more followers than I do on yeah. Instagram and a scare house has tremendously more than that, right? Yeah, they have a lot a lot more than I do. Mm-hmm. They're much more popular than I am. But the questions never go away. They or the responses never go away. Um, if for one, even after you respond to them and, uh, which is confusing because the more responses you get, things move around. So it's like, oh, this might be a new question, but it's actually just kind of, that's the thing that bugged me yeah. because I went through and I'm like, oh, I just look at the end, but they popped up like mm. right in the middle for mm-hmm. some reason. So they populate very oddly. Yeah. And it yeah. Makes, it kind of made me crazy, but yeah. So like I said, it's very clunky right now. So I'm not sure if the updates will change and as you go along, um, but yeah, yeah, it's for 24 hours that lives there, and um, it gets a little weird as you get closer to the end of your 24 hours because it's like, well, we're trying to keep up with everything. Mm-hmm. But here is my thing. Um, there were articles after this was released, this update was released, that said, beware, your stories are not private. These are not anonymous responses, essentially, to your... I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, the responses to the questions that you're giving to other people is not anonymous. If I were to give a response to something Sorg posted, like ask him a question like, do you like purple? Uh, It would show my face and my name and have my response. Right, like in your story. Yeah, I would be able to see who asked the question because that's a lot of people went into this with the expectation that they would just, it would be like a list of questions that people would answer and there would be anonymity. There we go. Um, for that and there wasn't and i was surprised at how many people were shocked and like i'm not touching this i thought these were private and you weren't going to see that because people were like flat out like their crushes were saying ask me anything and they're like hey do you think i'm cute you know do you think so and so is cute and they're thinking that they don't know that it's them posting that question and meanwhile it is okay and so so i know so we're getting on our end i'm seeing their names right but when I share that response, if I share that question with a response and that question pops up, I'm not seeing that name. No, you can tag people because so, I saw people were But tagging. I can tag people mm-hmm. that their question had been. So I have to go the extra step. But in the meantime, you are not submitting a question anonymously. Correct. And there's no real... So I, feel like, I feel like you would know that. I, f- I feel like... I, I, I feel would... like I would, that I, I, I would expect you would know that I asked the question. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I was, I I don't understand, uh, this is probably me, social media jaded, but there's no reasonable expectation for privacy at this point in anonymity because Mm -hmm. there are too many issues with that at this point across the board, no matter what the social media platform is, that you almost have to expect that people are going to out you versus like, oh, they're not going to say anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, That's, um, I mean, we even have, um, there's certain uh, like community groups that I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm part of. And there's a little of like, hey, let's not just, even though it's a private group and everything, it's like, this is a thing I'm not going to describe in text. Yeah. You know, this is a thing that's not going to be in an email. This is like, like that kind of idea, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, no, we're going to have a discussion about this because we don't want this recorded somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, in, in anything like that. So, I mean, that's kind of how I behave with Facebook. Like, even I've had a, 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 a thread of some some stuff that's been going on in my neighborhood that I, mm-hmm. I know is private to my friends, mm-hmm. but I still am very aware of who I'm friended and who can screen cap on Facebook mm-hmm. and the fact that things just kind of become public out of nowhere. Yeah. So so it, it kind of still goes down to that. Don't do stuff on the internet 
that you don't want people to find out, right? Oh, they'll eventually find out. Yeah, exactly. We always find out. There's, exactly. There is um it's I, I was surprised because I on Scarehouse's account, I only had a few questions that were kind of really snarky versus anything else. And then I, I answered, I answered them honestly, mm-hmm. um, because I think that's easy. Some of them were kind of ridiculous that I was like, I'm not even putting that out there. <laughs> right. Which is kind of part of the job, right. Is deciding yeah. which are the kind of, you know, qualifying questions and not. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and then a couple people put out there as jokes and I responded to them anyway, because <laughs> that's what I do. But I'm hoping that uh, Android users get the functionality that we've had because it's nice being, because um, I just, I was just using the same photo that I originally posted the ask me anything post the original post. I used that same photo in the background of every mm-hmm. question I answered. And I know you were using some of the, thumbnails and things yeah i was like looking for things to respond like i would go back into my feed especially mm-hmm. with the wrestling stuff yeah. um and i was trying to find stuff i know i know when you were doing your personal one like you were looks like you were just in the car <laughs> just was. taking different angles of yourself and expressions <laughs> and everything and I thought it was kind of a fun playful way to do that too which and also i've seen uh, the wrestlers have been using it mm-hmm. and seeing them re- respond to things and of course they gotta have all kinds of interesting stuff coming through for them you know because i know some of our, our female wrestler friends have been really vocal about the things they get told about like like even promoters and fans lately on, on there. Uh, I need to check. That one is selling a book about it, I believe. Nice. <laughs> well, I can't even imagine. I think it's just a book of all the responses, all the horrible messages she's received from wrestling promoters over the years. That's um, fantastic. So, and I, I, she might be doing it for charity or something, but still, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. That awareness, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I did send, there is a local wrestler who did an ask me anything kind of a thing, and I was asking inappropriate questions, and he answered them, so I was there excited. There you go, there you go. His initials may have BC and Steel in them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so if you saw anything inappropriate, it was probably coming from me. So going along, right along with this, mm-hmm. um, I thought maybe we'd uh, uh, get into some of our questions that were asked Ooh, yeah. on the Instagram. Uh, this is on this is on my personal Sorgatron account using that using this Instagram questions feature. Uh, Prof Pod, that would be Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. We need to get him on. We've had him on Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, the last uh, couple of weeks, and and uh, and they do very techie podcasts as well. So we need, definitely need to connect with them a bit more. Uh, but he says uh, he asks, "Are we spreading ourselves too thin on social media?" Uh, I should. Uh, I should Snapchat, Facebook, and tout this, he says. <laughs> and, of course, you don't know tout. We always make that joke because WWE invested highly in tout back in the day, which is like Vine or something and Snapchat-y. It yeah. still exists. Oh, wow. It's still, like, out there and works, and they had a bunch of celebrities behind it. But, um, yeah, so, you work in this space. Well, yeah. I mean, I do, too, but I mean, but you were probably more directly in this in this space of directly you know, as we just talked about, you know, managing something for something like the scare house, that's like a pretty big scale mm-hmm. compared to anything that a lot of us are dealing with. How do you kind of manage that? Are we, are you, how do you keep from getting spread too thin? I think is the first question that goes with that. Oh gosh. With just social media as a whole impossible. No. <laughs> oh, and, and I'm sorry. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Grace is the, the wrestler that's doing the book. That's says Alex cool. in the, uh, in the chat room. Thanks Alex. I think with social media, um, I pick my battles. I try to figure out first is where my audience is. And I, with Scarehouse personally, I can say we have over 80,000 likes on Facebook. That is an impressive number. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Instagram, I have, we have like 3,400, I believe roughly or somewhere. If you break down into the numbers, most of my audience or audience, I keep saying mine because I just used to it my phone. Um, It seems like it. most of our audience is Pittsburgh-based in our age group on Instagram, which is nice. And with Facebook, it's kind of a, since we have so many, they're kind of spread across the country. It's fantastic. Um, but you, we get a little more personal with Instagram because we know that's where our kind of our, our core group is. So I, I try to push more out there, more like insider stuff there. I don't want to say that Facebook is... Facebook is a place to uh, share like fun things too for us. That's what we like to use it for. It's, it's hard when you're in a haunted house or something. It's a seasonal business. You're like, what do I do the rest of the year when I'm not going, hey, buy tickets? Um, it's, you know, sharing the fun things. We sprinkle Twitter here and there. We're much more active on Twitter during the season because I am surprised about the number of interactions we still get on Twitter, mm-hmm. which is fun. Uh, but yeah, it's like just trying to keep on the, the main things and hoping that apps like Facebook pages get better. 
<laughs> and you know what? And it's also it's also depends on where you're at. Like one thing that sticks in my head when I'm doing things that, that I think you said one time mm-hmm. was was the now stuff happens on Twitter. The after event stuff happens on like say a Facebook or mm-hmm. like I I loop um, um, Instagram partially into that. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it depends on what you're doing. Like stories is now Instagram feed pictures is later, right? Yes. So. Yes. I, I like I like Instagram stories. It's it's one of my favorite things that have come out lately as far as like new social media things and stuff. Mm-hmm. Because it's it's you can be a little goofier with it. You can be I've I've we've been sillier on Scarehouse's Instagram than we've been other places. Well, like like reactions to how hot it is in the Scarehouse <laughs> I saw today. I chase down my coworkers and ask them how hot it is, then I play Nelly. That's what the fun thing is. It's it's more of our personality, I think, comes out there. And it's really weird for me to be honest. We, you know, having a podcast, having all these different things that I have to sometimes remind myself that I'm, we may have said something in one social space, but not everywhere else. So we'll make a reference and then I'll be like, oh, there's probably like five people that get that. Or, you know, like there's this like very select audience that'll get that. And uh, it's funny because you're like, oh, wait a minute. I mean, we haven't done this. And then that's, it's okay to repeat the same conversations other places because that little group may not have, you know, not everybody has saw it. And, it's, and, and even sometimes like we, we deal with this, like, like on the same platform because mm-hmm. we're redundantly kind of saying certain things on, because we have these umbrella kind of properties with Sorgatron Media and then Awesome Cast and Wrestling Mayhem Show under that or Indie Wrestling and then Wrestling Mayhem Show, right? So like there's, there's like that crossover audience. So you'll kind of repeat yourself, but realizing some people will be seeing it double, but some people, you know, aren't. So, mm-hmm. you know, how do you kind of juggle that has been a big thing for us. So, um, probably along with this, while well, I'm trying to get, there's having some problems getting uh, chilling in here. No. It's, I think it's the computer. Um, I, I'll throw you this one that, Ooh, I like it. that, that uh, uh, was going in here from Alex Cars out there in California. Um, why does Snapchat feel really difficult to get into? Is it an age generation thing or just a different way of doing social media? And I know you've played, you've played with yes. this and obviously probably settled into Instagram <laughs> for the most part, right? Well, I actually, it's really funny. I was joking. I was just joking about this the other day that I can figure out, I figured out Snapchat stuff faster than I figured out some Instagram things. And I'm like, what does that say about me? <laughs> um, but it is, it's, it's a uh, Snapchat chats, a challenge because even just there, there's no analytics so you at least you know what what i'm doing at my level uh there's not really any analytics analytics besides like this many people saw it and i'm like well that doesn't tell me too much um if, if from a marketer's point of view um snapchat's hard because it's to get it out to a certain audience like you're not if people discover it that's great but it's really hard to put content out there that's interesting happening right now I think sometimes because it's like, well, we're like I said, we're over on Instagram because we can down. Well, we can download it in both places too. I don't know. I wish I had a very great answer for you, but it seems like it just seems like, I don't know. It's harder to target your audience on Snapchat versus like an Instagram or it's that crossover thing. You know, it is that idea that, um, uh, you know, I was just listening to Gary Vaynerchuk just had another podcast with like all of his responses about Snapchat. You can't have that. You know, it, it's harder to, Cross that over, right? Yeah. Sorry, excuse me while I'm I'm calling Chilla and working this out. Oh, you're fine. I um, mean, if they still had the dancing hot dog, it would be all exactly. over everything. Now that's what got me back when I had 3D of myself um um doing stuff. Like that was cool. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. I do like I like the AR filters. Oh, AR, yeah. They, they they're doing stuff like that that really kind of you know makes you want to be a part of it. Yes. But it's I, I just it's not. I don't have the same circle over there as I do other places. And and, and that kind of goes to, that's why Snapchat kind of stuck out. And, mm-hmm. and I think so many like kids, especially the privacy part, of course, mm-hmm. but I think they latched on because it did behave different. They didn't, some people's heads can wrap around like an Instagram better than they can a Snapchat. Yeah. And some like some, I'm sure there's a lot of kids that, that have grown up on Snapchat that can't get their head around Instagram. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm convinced there is, there are people who are just sitting in a room all day long with different interfaces at different, you know, different age groups at different interfaces, like different versions of these apps that we're seeing and going, if you wanted to do that, what motion would you make on the screen? Or what would you do here? And it's probably going the same thing with as far as like iPhones and our cell phones. There, there are people that are doing, you know, if what, what what intuitive feed, like how would you think you would do this? Would you think you would swipe up? Do you think you'd swipe left? Do you think you'd swipe down? And just kind of taking that information and going, okay, this is what's happening. 
And they probably can, honestly, I, I bet you Snapchat and Instagram and all them probably can see that those answers, you know, what we're doing right now, like, which look at how many times she swiped this direction and got things wrong before she figured out what she was doing. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm assuming that's probably what they're looking at and that kind of stuff. But it might, on, it might be a different mindset and we might be wired differently than those 10, 20, <laughs> we are 30, how many years younger than us? Yeah, and, and, and yeah, I think that's that's a big part of it too. So I mean, it's um, and I know, and I think Facebook is having, or I'm sorry, Snapchat's having trouble with that because you know if you made yourself too different, it's hard for people to jump on, and you can't grow anymore. And plus, Instagram's kind of eating your lunch now, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, it, it is. <laughs> so, um, we had another question yeah, in Jill. here. Let's see. This is a fun one. Uh, Bobby, Ooh. why is Bobby Cherry so awesome? Uh, by Bobby Cherry. Bobby Cherry is so awesome <laughs> because I expect him to be at Kennywood every time I'm at Kennywood, and he's when he's not, it's very disappointing to me. I would like to point that out there, Bobby. I expect you to be at Kennywood every time I'm at Kennywood. Um, I also expect Bobby to be watching Golden Girls with me more often. And what else? I like Bobby. I want more videos of cats, please. And. Yeah, stop hanging out near and start hanging out more with cats. Yeah, and seriously. Stuff. Seriously, dude. But yeah, Bobby's okay. He's a cool dude. Sometimes. <laughs> He's just, he has his moments. And uh we had one uh we ha- we had one where uh Alex was asking Facebook versus I'm sorry, WordPress versus Squarespace. Ooh. That's probably I don't know. Have you you've dealt a little bit with like, you kind of have your own thing for Scarehouse. I'm out of control. But... Yeah, <laughs> we're Ruby on the Rails. I'm Ruby on Rails. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. We got Ruby draw. on Rails oh, over right. here. I'm doing that Ruby shenanigans. <laughs> That's all Missy. That's all Missy. Well, we've kind of made a decision. Like we, it, It's from job to job. And actually, Missy and I were just talking about this the other day. Um, and uh, sorry, Hangouts is not working for Chilla. Well, it's not working on my end for Chilla. Uh, so I think that's completely my computer. So we're going to restart that. Um, for us, it's been like, kind of depends on what you need to do. Mm-hmm. Like basically, if like a client comes and says, "I need to do X, Y, and Z," and like, "Well, that's a Facebook thing," or "No, you can get away with Squarespace." Also, is, am I handing this to somebody else? Right. Yeah. yeah. For most people out there that are just getting into the website idea, I think you should go with a Squarespace. It, you, you get something pretty, pretty nice right out of the gate, right? Um, and uh, uh, you know, versus a WordPress like uh, you know, Missy, we were just talking about yesterday uh, what she did with the Millville Music Fest. Where she was able to go in there, get this plug in, and rework it so that you had this big um, schedule for the, that insane amount of stuff that they have going on down there, and you could add it all to your Google Calendar so you didn't miss anything, right? Um, like that's not something that I don't think I, I don't think you could build as easily on a Squarespace. There is like a developer developer module that's happening there, but you know it's it's you have to be a developer developer and working in that like you might as well be you know it feels like you might as well be on ruby on rails or something at yeah, that point right because you're, you're not yeah it, it's you know unless you're a developer at that point versus a maker you know um uh i, th- I think that's the case there um i think like like if you're just i need to do a site for my podcast Go to a Squarespace, yeah. you know, or or even look at Fireside as a host and say, well, actually, that's pretty much what we need for a website. I mean, I know you moved your podcast uh, 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 site over to that mm-hmm. as its, as its primary thing. I have some clients, some other clients that have done the same thing uh, as their landing pages. So um, versus okay. if you're a business, mm-hmm. uh, Dark Forge here in the basement, they're, mm-hmm. they're Square or Squarespace, um, but he just needs a showpiece, right? Mm-hmm. Restaurants, like things like that. You don't have to worry about the updates, mm-hmm. right? You don't have to worry about, you know, it being hacked into as hard. Um, you know, it really, you you really, I think, have a lot more freedom and less to worry about for, for that, you know, versus a WordPress, like, the price is all encompassing. Now, there is a WordPress.com, but I, I think there's, like, a lot of tiers and stuff to that. I see that as an option if you like the words. WordPress ecosystem and just want something that you're not, I have to pay for a GoDaddy host and install it there and do that kind of thing. So that is an option too, but we haven't dived a lot into it. Um, Bobby Cherry, I see in the chat room. I, I wonder if he caught the answer to his question. Uh, <laughs> or his ears were burning. That could be too. He's like, Man, He's like, oh, somebody. Oh, 
he he's going by on the train as the broadcast is in here, which he contributes to par- on 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 Patreon to the broadcast, our Aww. friends of broadcast podcast. And he took a picture took a picture of us while we were recording in here as he's passing on the train. Get off the train, Bobby! Visit us. Say yeah. hi. Yeah. Jeez. I think you get. I think you do get a uh, live audience uh, visit for the broadcast too, as part of your your level over there on Patreon. So, all right. All right here's a question for you. I'm gonna for me. I'm asking you anything. Uh, use Facebook a lot in Facebook ads. Um, do you think Facebook is hitting a point with the different apps that you need to run a Facebook page to run ads, which is a separate, you know, your Facebook apps, mm-hmm. you have your pages, uh, you have your ads app, you know, these are all separate things. Now you have business manager accounts and then you have like, do you think Facebook is just overcomplicating things to a point that they're going to lose a lot of their everyday small businesses not even going to get into the algorithm, which is going to so, screw people. So, to begin with. I, and, and I think I haven't. You're you're I think more into the ads than I mm-hmm. am, because um, we really haven't had projects with like a really a budget to really dive into them. Mm-hmm. Um, but just kind of looking at the complication that goes to it. Yes. But I mean, that that's if that's the place people are they're going to go there. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to figure it out and they're going to bang their head against the wall and figure it out. Right. Until somebody is starting to eat Facebook's lunch. Mm-hmm. Now it's going to be an easy exit. Be like, Oh, this platform, there's stuff. And man, this is a lot simpler to use. I'm going over here. Mm-hmm. So maybe not yet, but I think eventually, yeah, absolutely. Cause I just, I feel like every day working in Facebook ads and, and using Facebook and pages, it, it just gets, they add things every single day, I swear. Mm-hmm. Just like, mm-hmm. what is this? Just thing managing pages from week mm-hmm. to week and coming in on a Monday to my clients and be like, oh, hey, that thing is completely different than yeah. the week before. How about that? Versus uh, catching a little bit, uh, our friend Doug, Doug Durda uh, in, in our Slack uh, shared the, the uh, you know, Google was doing their announcements a couple weeks ago and seeing the ad manager and creator, like the banner ad creator that they have, like mm-hmm. it looks so slick, right? Mm-hmm. It, and it looks like, you know, that nice pull together model that, that, that their, their Google slides are in Google drive and everything like that. So, and, and I feel like, you know, the few times I jumped into Google to try to like figure out AdSense and that kind of stuff, it's just like, well, this is like a complicated mess and I need to be, you know, a, a, you know, expert in marketing and all this stuff in order to, in numbers and everything in order to do this, it was, it was just too heady versus, Hey, there's this and you can do this and that. So they mean that's bringing people over to the Google side a little bit mm-hmm. too. But then again, Google doesn't have a Facebook. Yeah. They, they tried with Google plus and they just don't, they have, they have YouTube. Yeah. There's that. And that's strong and that's powerful. Right. Mm-hmm. But, um, See, YouTube is powerful. If your particular product fits youtube exactly because speaking as a haunted house um it's very you can do it you can you can do youtube ads it just you run a very strong risk of um being quote-unquote offensive uh like in your imagery has to you have to be very careful with your imagery that has killed off a lot of pro wrestling that's true yeah you know? and it's again that hey because like i was looking at through the stuff the other day and one of the, the wrestling promotions we work with i'm looking like oh good yo you guys have ten thousand subscribers mm-hmm. but you're pro wrestling and the bottom fell out on that a year ago yeah so like and, and there's and i was just looking at this like we gave away so many matches over there that we were selling on other platforms that are just out there now that thousands of people have seen. And what did we build with that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you have now? So there's also the giving stuff away and investing in a platform. And then, like, what happens when that goes away? Which, you know, I always, you know, we always shop about the, you know, yeah, I have that home base with a dot com and everything for everybody to go to. Mm-hmm. You know, the bomb falls out of that. Great. Let's point everybody over here yeah, back home, using back home. your platform that doesn't work for us anymore, yeah. right? Back home, back home, back home. Go yeah, here. Yeah. 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 yeah, it just, I, I I don't know. There's it's weird that there's so much out there, but nothing is ideal at this point. Right, right. But I mean, it's just like you were talking about social media. About uh, it depends on where your audience mm-hmm. is at. It depends on where your content belongs yeah. to when you yeah. look at ads. Yeah. So I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And, it, and it's it's very understanding that there's so many small businesses having issues 
getting into social media because I think the barrier of entry is much higher now than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Because at one point it was just like, just go on Facebook and post something, boost it. That's cool. Oh, wait, we can do ads now. We can just put together this nice Yeah, picture. people will go crazy with that boost button for a while. Yeah. I think we do have a John Chichel on the line. What? John, are you there? I am here. I. I, I can see me, but I can't see you. You can't see yeah. me? Okay, well, at <laughs> least we, we got us. the important parts. We got the important parts, I think. And I think I did not activate the proper camera for you yet. So let me let me fix that here real quick. Uh, how you doing, sir? Not too bad. I, I was here and I was listening along on the uh, the Facebooks. Um, there you are. Re real quick, back uh, call back to the, you know, hey, you want to host your podcast. I was surprised to see Microsoft has actually shifted their podcast to Lipson. Where did it used to be? I thought was uh, I think they were partially self-hosted and mm. partially kind of YouTube-esque. <laughs> somebody hey, go check this YouTube video. So out. somebody looked at it and said, "Why are we on our own platform? Nobody else is going here." You know, they're just like, "Let's <laughs> let's shut this down and de dedicate it to Azure and and, and throw the podcast over on Lipson." Yeah, the, the interesting thing is <clears throat> Obviously, they're rolling their own website on their own platform. They're rolling a lot on their own. I'm surprised they didn't. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just an RSS feed. Yeah. It kind of really surprised me why they would partner with Lipson on that. And, and I'm I'm interested. I've I've tried to tried to I'm trying to dig deeper into that one. Uh, uh, we, on we should we should just message our friends at Lipson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, um of course a pittsburgh-based company and then they've been at uh, all the pod camps over the years so um you know really good and, and good to see that some of them are going to be at a podcast movement coming up too yeah yeah so um i think rob walsh is going to be out there doing a doing a thing i was finally looking Ooh. through the schedule the other day trying to figure out what i'm going to do and and when i'm going to talk to the pod patreon people and and see how life how do i make our patreons better and everything you know so um Oh, that's good. That's some good news in the chat room. Uh, uh, Chilla, was there anything else that we chatted about? We were kind of asking a while about uh, people were asking about like what what makes Snapchat difficult. How do you balance social media? Uh, things like that. No device questions for you yet. If there's anything you wanted to hit on, um, I've I've found I'm probably the odd one. I found Snapchat difficult from day one, mm -hmm. and they've only made it worse by kind of adding in their like their their my subscriptions with their feed kind of thing they've seemed to have broken that back out to a, a fourth panel i i just find it counterintuitive using their application um I apologize for that noise on the on the stream apparently there's a java update available on my yeah, newly restarted <laughs> chilla machine i was over wondering here. it started it started stuttering when you were talking i thought it might have been me because <laughs> no because it just did a restart so it's probably doing all that restart up stuff right now so uh, you're you're syncing uh google drive and yeah 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 i gotta get all that synced up right <laughs> so but anyways what soon we'll do the main sh sh um, soon uh, uh, but speaking of uh, podcasts and social media and <clears throat> Uh, hosting your own blogs. The one thing I was interested in too is I, I feel like Microsoft, so Microsoft from what I've seen never had a kind of formal podcast. They've started their formal podcast and they've recently added recording into Skype mm -hmm. and they're bringing that Skype recording cross platform. So you're actually going to get Skype recording on iOS and you'll be that's able to screen huge. share from iOS. That's huge. That's huge for every podcaster that's used Skype for all these years. Yeah, and, and then there's well so, and then, and then there's so many just scratching their heads because they've all left Skype years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I wonder if, it, cause I'm sure, I mean, their, their accounts aren't deleted. I'm wondering if this will bring some of those people back to that platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. So, all right. Uh, well, this has been our AMA. I think everybody like, submitted questions. Uh, again, this is going out for our week off. Uh, I will be uh, at Podcast Movement cheering on my wife, who's speaking at Podcast Yay! Movement. Uh, she was the one accepted out of the three of us that submitted, including myself and another uh, podcast here on the network. Uh, so that'll be fun. We're going out to Philly for that. And uh, we'll, I'm sure, have plenty to talk about on Awesome Cast as well and try to spread the things that we're doing around here. Uh, real quick, Katie, where can people find out what you're doing? Uh, usually just stuff. Go on Scarehouse's Instagram, Scarehouse. I'm doing a lot there. Fun there things. And Facebooks. And John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. That's me, ChillaTech.net, John Chichilla on the Facebooks. 
All right. Thank you again, everybody that's joined us here on this uh, kind of off time, um, early AMA recording here on this Tuesday. And uh, thank you, everybody. We'll be back, of course, live Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, starting the next week after you hear this episode and back until, you know, probably until the holiday. Uh, So until then, thank you for being our awesome audience. Have an awesome day. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.